Now, when we started all of this, I showed you a time waveform. You know, we we looked and um, you know saw it, and I'll I'll show you that again just if you're not sure. The time waveform is more complicated to look at, but the time waveform can reveal all sorts of fault conditions that you might miss otherwise. So here's a time waveform, and I'll get back to what this means, but it's it's sort of like having a movie camera that's filming inside your machine and seeing every little thing that goes on as those balls roll around inside your bearing, as the teeth mesh together. It's seeing everything from moment to moment to moment. The spectrum takes sort of like a long record of all of that, a whole lot of that film or a whole lot of that recording and tries to summarize it into a spectrum. And sometimes that summarization process, is that the right word, um, actually loses information. The time waveform tells us exactly what happened. So we saw earlier, you know, as I clicked on the little buttons, you know, these are the individual components of the time waveform. This red one is the raw time waveform. Simplified, but that's the raw time waveform. So in other words, in order to collect this thing called a time waveform, you don't necessarily have to do anything different. You just have to tell your analyzer to store it. Of course, you also want to look at it. Now, the truth is that to do spectrum analysis correctly, you need to look very carefully at the F max, which is the highest frequency in the spectrum, and the resolution, it's sort of like the clarity, the amount of detail in that spectrum. And when you make those settings, that affects the time waveform that needs to be captured to create that spectrum. Well, you need to look at what that time waveform will look like and ensure that what you hope to see in a time waveform will be visible. And that's where a lot of vibration analysts get caught up. They look in a, at the time waveform and they see it just looks boring, it just looks like a whole lot of... Uh, blue graph and they say, ah, oh, it's not telling me anything, I'm not going to bother with this anymore. Please bother, please just make sure you get this, the settings right. We spend a lot of time on this in training to make sure people understand why. And what I'm about to show you is sort of a, a simplified explanation of, of why people get it wrong and what you need to know. Now, remember I said time waveform analysis is a little bit like using a video camera. And you're probably aware that a video camera records, I think, it's 24 frames per second because when you play those 24 frames a second back, our brains can't tell that it's just 24 pictures that we looked at in that second. It looks like it's all continuous. Well, time waveforms are the same. When we choose the, uh, the settings for our spectrum, the analyzer decides how frequently it's going to convert that analog voltage from the sensor into a digital number that the analyzer has to use because it's like a mini computer. And that's what those red dots represent. The red dots represent each time that it converted the analog to digital. It might sound very technical, but it's pretty simple really. Um, and you can see in this case that all those little red dots uh, follow exactly along the black line, which is, let's call it the analog signal, the actual vibration that we're measuring. So that's all very simple, but what if it was a, sh a gearbox, a gear, and there was damage on it? Well, we can translate these little red dots onto the surface of the machine we're testing, because if you can imagine, just as the camera takes a whole bunch of shots, um, it's also like taking little mini pictures at the gear as it's going past. Now, if you watch, on the left you can see the... <laughs> The, the damaged tooth and on the yellow graph there you can see that there's only really maybe one or two red dots on that spike of vibration. The bottom line is, I don't want to make it too complicated, the bottom line is we would like to have lots of red dots on those teeth, especially on the broken tooth, so that we know what's going on. And that all depends on the settings that you use it's important to get the settings right. So, I'll show you one example. Imagine here we have a rolling element that is damaged. 
and that rolling element you know rolls up out of the load zone and now it's going to go down into the load zone well this is what the time waveform shows us uh, in the load zone is where the amplitude's highest out of the load zone is where the amplitude's lower so that's the load zone that's sort of taking all the weight of the machine uh, and there it is here and that's uh, not taking the weight so the impacts are weaker this time waveform tells me about the nature of the fault condition and tells me about the severity how many G's of vibration tell me how severe the problem is and it's something that I can monitor over time so that's you know a very useful uh, sort of display here we have two gears and if you look closely they're moving uh, closer together further apart now it's all exaggerated but if you look at this it's, it's eccentric uh, could be misaligned it could be bent you know we see this pattern but when we look at it as a time waveform there it is that's when they're closer together and in between is when they're further apart we get this pulsation of vibration that's when the lower speed gear it goes through the mesh you know uh, how, how the forces change and that's the higher speed gear you can see the little sort of pulsations in here now the spectrum might show us this these are sidebands in the spectrum we didn't really explain that but that's just one of the complications of well I shouldn't say it's a complication it's actually very helpful but we see these all these little peaks they're called sidebands it means there's modulation so if we do our spectrum analysis properly with enough resolution we can see this um, but we can see this for a lot of different reasons when we look at the time waveform it's telling me exactly what's going on here I'm showing looseness there's the bearing sort of rattling around or the shaft with the inner race if you look closely it's sort of rattling around because there's too much clearance and maybe there's some unbalance driving that force that motion and here is the spectrum I mentioned it earlier we've got a lot of these peaks that's the running speed twice running speed three times these are harmonics so sure I would see that and in this instance I'd probably think it was looseness but when I can look at the time waveform look at that bang 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 each of those spikes is occurring once for every revolution of the shaft so it's turning going bang 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 once per revolution it's looseness like with everything in life the more facts the more information you have to help you make the decision the better sure I could just take a spectrum and in this instance I'd probably diagnose it correctly but it is so reassuring to look at the time waveform and say right I know what's going on for sure I know how severe it is I know how quickly I need to act and so when I say that some work needs to be done my confidence level is much higher um, I can make better decisions and we can make decisions that could cost a lot of money if I get them right and save the maintenance work or if I get it wrong and it fails so the more information you have the better for sure and here's the one we saw in the first place what's actually happening is as all of these good gear teeth are going through the mesh with the mating gear we actually get this low amplitude vibration see in the gaps you see just low amplitude vibration but when these two damaged teeth go through the mesh boom there they go through the mesh big spike there they go through it again once per revolution of this gear we see a spike in the vibration now often you'd be hard pressed to pick that up in the spectrum alone you know it's a once per revolution vibration there are other things you'll see in the spectrum but you know the time waveform tells you perfectly look exactly what's happening and there are some cool ways that you can look at time waveforms well I think it's pretty cool what we're seeing here but you can mark it off in revolutions of the shaft you can look at it wrapped around a circle and see that once per revolution it's it's occurring all really cool techniques but it's telling me exactly what's going on by the way we should do oil analysis as well because that the pieces of metal would go into the oil and we could detect that so very useful technique in parallel with vibration analysis with gearboxes and that you might wonder what on earth is that now you could get all cranky about it and say oh goodness me look at all those little spikes what does it mean there's not an even gap between them gosh I'm confused time waveform analysis is too hard 
and that is a conclusion that a lot of people come to. The fact is, simplifying the story, if I look at a time waveform like that, then two seconds later I can move on to the next bit of data because the time waveform isn't really telling me anything that I wouldn't be able to pick up out of the spectrum. The spectrum translates all of that into useful information. Um, assuming that we collected the time waveform correctly in the first place, I could look at that and other than being interested maybe in the severity of it, you know, how many G's of vibration we're seeing, um, that's all I'm really getting out of it. But this vibration is actually from this same gear but in a healthier state. It just doesn't have the spikes, it's just the bit between the spikes, you know, rescaled and everything. Anyway, that was time waveform analysis.